Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanted to share with y'all one of my all-time favorite summertime dinner recipes, and that is chicken caprice with roasted yellow potatoes and some asparagus. This is my all-time favorite meal, but especially in the summertime, all of the ingredients are super fresh, and then for dessert afterwards, we're gonna go ahead and slice up a watermelon. So I'm excited about that. And then I'm also gonna share with y'all my cleaning routine of the kitchen after dinner. So stay tuned until the very end, and let's go ahead and jump right in. Today's recipe calls for four skinless chicken breasts, salt and pepper, olive oil, garlic cloves, two pints of cherry tomatoes, 10 large basil leaves, eight ounces of mozzarella cheese, and then some balsamic vinegar to taste. Okay, so I'm just gonna start out by chopping up these small yellow potatoes into bite-sized pieces. I like to get these as small as possible so they get nice and crispy and then drizzle them with a little bit of melted butter. And then I just like to sprinkle some garlic salt and pepper on them. And then I will cook them at 425 for about 25 minutes. And these are so stinking delicious and can go with pretty much any dinner. So highly recommend. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I'm so happy to have you. My name is Lauren and I make lots of videos about cleaning, organizing, home decor, and all things homemaking. So if that's your thing, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. I would love to have you and let's continue cooking. All right, now that I've finished chopping up all of those potatoes into bite-sized pieces, I'm just gonna lay out some aluminum foil onto this pan and spread out those potatoes the best I can. And then I'm gonna melt about a tablespoon of butter in the microwave and pour that over these potatoes and then mix them in really well with my hands. And then I'm just gonna add some garlic salt and pepper before throwing it in the oven at 425 for about 25 minutes. And these are awesome. As I've told y'all before in previous videos, potatoes are definitely my thing. I will eat any kind of potato, but leave down in the comments below what your favorite type of potato is and how you make it because I think each potato is good in its own way, but definitely every type of potato needs to be cooked differently. With red potatoes, I like to boil them and smash them up with some cream cheese and butter and garlic salt. With these baby yellow potatoes, I like to roast them because they get really crispy and delicious. And then with regular brown potatoes, I feel like those are reserved for the baked potato style. So let me know down in the comments below what your favorite type of potato is and how you cook it. Massaging the butter really well in these potatoes makes a huge difference because when you bite into a potato and it's not well coated with butter, it's just not the same. So if you do decide to make these potatoes, make sure every last potato gets coated well with that butter. And now we are moving on to prepping up this chicken. So this is the chicken that I buy from Walmart. And what I do is I take all of the breasts out immediately and slice them in half horizontally so that they are thinner. And then I'll just put them in Ziploc baggies and freeze whatever I'm not gonna use right away. And this night we just needed two chicken breasts. So I'm gonna go ahead and put away all of the rest of those real quick. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is salt and pepper both sides of the chicken breast. And then in a large saute pan over medium high heat, you're just gonna warm a tablespoon of olive oil. And then you're gonna slap that chicken in there and let it come to a, or sear the chicken and cook it for about 10 minutes. And then you're gonna flip the chicken breast and continue cooking until the chicken is cooked thoroughly. And you're gonna want a thermometer to make sure that it reaches the temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit so you don't get sick. <laughs> After I sliced up all that chicken, I just went ahead and took my Windex disinfectant and wiped down the countertop really well so that it doesn't have any raw chicken residue left. And then we are gonna move on in just a second. 
I know that every stovetop and oven is different when it comes to temperature, but for some reason our stovetop gets super hot. So this was on medium heat, but it was getting seared way too quickly. So I just seared it on the first side for about five minutes and then I went ahead and flipped it. And while I was waiting on the second side to get done, I moved on to the asparagus. So with this, I just like to take it in my hand and break it where it naturally breaks. And I learned this tip on Pinterest a few years back and it makes a huge difference. I don't cut it, I just break it where it naturally breaks and this makes it so much more tender. And we actually like the fluffy side of the asparagus better anyways. It gets really crispy and delicious. So once that is done, I'm gonna go ahead and flip this chicken back over and let it finish searing. And in just a second, we'll move on. Okay, the chicken finished searing, so I'm just gonna remove that and place it on a plate. And then I'm gonna add a tablespoon of olive oil to the same pan and let it saute with some garlic for about one minute until it's fragrant. And then I'm gonna add in the cherry tomatoes. About every 10 minutes while these potatoes are in the oven, I like to pull them out and kind of stir them around to make sure they're not getting more done on one side than the other. And then I just go ahead and slide them back in. But the full time for these potatoes is about 25 to 30 minutes. I said earlier that the smaller the potato, the better, and the same rule applies for these tomatoes. They get so much more tender when they're smaller, so I'm gonna go ahead and chop all of these baby tomatoes in half, and then I'm gonna go ahead and add them to the pan with the garlic and olive oil. While those tomatoes are getting tender, I like to go ahead and start on the asparagus. So I went ahead and melted some butter in the microwave and then I added in some garlic stir in paste to the butter and poured that over the asparagus and then coated it really well with my hands before throwing it in the oven at 425 for about 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, we are officially on the downhill slope for dinner. So I'm just gonna finish coating this asparagus with butter and salt and pepper and throw that in the oven for about 10 minutes. And then I'm gonna go ahead and check on the cherry tomatoes and make sure they are nice and tender. And then right in the same pan, I'm gonna go ahead and add back in the chicken and the basil. And you're gonna see that here in just a second. Dinner is almost done. This is the best part. For the basil, I don't worry about chopping it too small, but I just like to chop it in bite-sized pieces the best I can. This melts down pretty well, and then we're gonna go ahead and add that in with those tomatoes. To start the rebuilding of life The roads that lay open as soon as those tomatoes became tender, I went ahead and added in that basil. And then once the basil got a little bit melted in the pan, I just like to add back in my seared chicken breast and then top it with some fresh mozzarella cheese. This is the best part. Once I place that mozzarella on top, I just wanna make sure the chicken and the cheese is really well coated with those tomatoes and basil because that really adds all of the flavor. And then once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the potatoes out of the oven. The asparagus is almost done and we are almost ready to eat. Excuses were two for a penny, but they've all gone out the window of this car. And when I feel the wind on my face All that ever was is a rash. I always like to taste test the potatoes to make sure they're done But they usually look a little bit brown and always taste us because they're so delicious. But 
whenever they get brown, that's when they're done. And the asparagus, I like to eat those when the ends, the fluffy part, I'm not sure what that's called, but when that gets a little bit darker, that's when I know that they're done and they're super tender and delicious. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and load my plate with that delicious asparagus and those buttery potatoes and that juicy chicken breast. And here in just a second, I will show you the end product. And as we all know by now, it's not a Lauren video unless something major flops. I just dropped that chicken breast right into those potatoes, but it's okay, we salvaged it. And we are moving on to showing you the finished product. This was so incredibly delicious. I highly recommend this recipe, especially for the summertime. Try it out and let me know what you think. Now that we've enjoyed that incredible dinner, it was time to get this kitchen cleaned up. So I'm gonna start out by cleaning off the bar top and putting away all of the extra food that we had left. Once I get that bar top cleared off, I'm just going to spray it down with some Honeysuckle Mrs. Meyers Multi-Surface Spray, wipe that down, and then we'll move on to cleaning off that stove top. I never thought in the wildest dream I'd see you again. Never dreamed about now. Whenever I keep leftovers, I like to be really picky about what I keep and what I throw out because a lot of times we don't end up eating leftovers. And so I knew we were gonna eat these potatoes. However, there wasn't very much asparagus left, so I went ahead and just tossed that. But for the potatoes, I just grabbed a small yellow bowl with a lid and threw that in the refrigerator. And I'm just gonna to toss this foil and then I'm gonna to have to wash all of these pans. As you will notice, when I'm cleaning up for dinner, I like to go by sections, just like I do in all of my other cleaning videos. So I went ahead and cleared off that bar top and wiped it down really well. That gets me going and motivated to finish the rest of the kitchen. And then when I move on to my stove top, I like to go ahead and move everything off of it, including the spoon rest and wash all of that in the sink. And then I like to wipe down my oven with some Windex and some paper towels to go ahead and shine that up. All right, now that I have the bar top cleaned off and the stove top all clean, I'm gonna move on to the sink. So I'm just gonna rinse all of these dirty plates and throw them in the dishwasher. And then I'm gonna wash all of my pans by hand before scrubbing out this sink. So for my after dinner cleanup routine, I kind of go in a circle. I move from the bar to the stove to the sink and then I finish up with the floor. Let me know down in the comments below if you have a routine, if you stick with it every time, or if you're kind of just all over the place and you do whatever you want and it's different every night. By the way, I found these colorful cutting mats at Walmart for like four bucks 
and I love them because you can cut each different kind of food on a different color. So all of your chicken, your like raw chicken can go on one color and then all of your veggies can go on one color and it helps to keep everything separate so I love that. Some of the things that I like to wash by hand are the knives and the pots and pans, but let me know down in the comments below, do you just throw everything in the dishwasher or do you like to wash some things by hand to keep it safe? And I just recently bought this cast iron skillet and found that you're not supposed to wash this with soap. You just run some water in it and scrub it out with a sponge or a brush and then go ahead and put it away. It does not need soap. I kind of have a routine where I grab that blue brush to scrub out all of the food from all of my dishes and then I use the yellow sponge to really clean them. Let me know what y'all do. Do you clean and scrub out food with the same brush? I have done this different my whole life. I always switch it up, but right now that's my current routine. And then of course, once I get all of the dishes put away, I like to squirt down my sink with some Mrs. Meyers dish soap in the honeysuckle scent, scrub it down with my yellow sponge, and then dry it all out with a towel. Once the sink is cleaned out and all of the countertops are wiped down, I just like to take my Dyson and vacuum up all of the crumbs off of the floor and then we are going to call it done.
Now that everything is done and the kitchen is clean, I'm gonna run this trash out to the dumpster because it was full of raw chicken and I'm just gonna replace it with a fresh bag. I hope y'all enjoyed today's cook and clean with me. Subscribe if you are new and I will see you on Saturday with a brand new video.